The Path of the Heretic by Je Heretic Chapter 1 The Dissenter In the heart of the city, nestled amidst towering skyscrapers and bustling streets, there resided an enigmatic figure shrouded in mystery and intrigue. He was known by a singular, provocative moniker, the Heretic. This name, a mere utterance, carried with it an aura of defiance and rebellion, a subtle spark of dissent in a society that thrived on conformity and rigid order. The heretic's existence was an enigma, an anomaly amidst the meticulously structured lives of the city's inhabitants. His identity was concealed beneath layers of anonymity, his face hidden in the shadows. Whispers about him traveled in hushed tones, like elusive secrets shared only in the darkest corners of the city's hidden enclaves. Those who knew of him did so clandestinely, for to openly discuss the heretic was to invite suspicion and scrutiny from the ever-watchful authorities. He was not an outlaw, nor did he lead a revolutionary faction plotting against the established order. Instead, the heretic was a thinker, a philosopher who dared to traverse the treacherous terrain of questioning the unquestionable. In a world where conformity was not just a social norm but an unwavering doctrine, he was a solitary voice that dared to challenge the status quo. He did not wield weapons or engage in acts of violence. His weapon was his intellect, his rebellion born of ideas. The heretic's home was a haven for intellectual exploration, a sanctuary where like-minded individuals, quietly dissatisfied with the city's monotonous rhythm, gathered to exchange forbidden thoughts. Discussions within those dimly lit rooms were filled with questions that dared to challenge the very foundations of the city's ordered existence. They debated the meaning of individuality in a world that sought to homogenize its citizens, the consequences of suppressing creativity in the name of unity, and the price society paid for its relentless pursuit of conformity. The authorities, Aware of the heretic's existence, but unable to unmask him, worked tirelessly to suppress the growing undercurrent of dissent that he had ignited. Raids and investigations targeted those suspected of sympathizing with his unconventional ideas. The heretic remained an elusive figure, an embodiment of intellectual resistance against a system that feared and loathed nonconformity. As the city continued to thrive on its foundation of uniformity, the heretic's presence served as a reminder that even in the most regimented of societies, the spirit of dissent and the pursuit of unconventional thought could never truly be extinguished. His name, whispered in those clandestine gatherings, was a beacon of hope for those who dared to question, a symbol of resistance in a world that demanded unwavering compliance. As the first rays of the morning sun filtered through the window of his modest apartment, the heretic stirred from his slumber. The room, bathed in the soft, golden light of dawn, appeared to be in a state of perpetual chaos. Books of all shapes and sizes lined every available shelf and piled up in haphazard stacks on the floor. Papers, their margins filled with handwritten notes and cryptic diagrams, were strewn about, creating a labyrinth of intellectual pursuits. Maps, old and new, lay open on tables and chairs, each charting a course of exploration, both physical and philosophical. The walls of the apartment bore witness to the heretic's relentless curiosity and passion for ideas. They were adorned with a patchwork of posters, paintings, and clippings, each telling a fragment of his story. One poster, prominently displayed amid the clutter, featured a simple yet profound statement, governments exist to protect and maintain the rights of civilians. This phrase, rendered in bold letters, was a reminder of the principles that fueled the heretic's dissenting spirit. The room itself seemed to be a reflection of his mind, a repository of knowledge, a testament to the unending quest for truth. Shelves bowed under the weight of books that spanned various disciplines, from philosophy to political theory, 
from history to science. The heretic was not just a thinker. He was a scholar, a voracious reader who sought to understand the intricacies of the world he inhabited. His writing desk, a centerpiece of organized chaos, was littered with half-finished essays and journals filled with musings on the nature of authority, the boundaries of personal liberty, and the delicate balance between order and freedom. Here, he penned his thoughts and gave life to the ideas that set him apart from the conformist masses. His writing desk, a centerpiece of organized chaos, was littered with half-finished essays and journals filled with musings on the nature of authority, the boundaries of personal liberty, and the delicate balance between order and freedom. Here, he penned his thoughts and gave life to the ideas that set him apart from the conformist masses. As the heretic prepared to face another day, he felt a deep sense of purpose. In a society that emphasized conformity above all else, his cluttered sanctuary served as a bastion of intellectual freedom. It was within these walls that he nurtured the flame of dissent, nurturing it with knowledge and feeding it with thought-provoking discussions. The small poster on the wall, with its seemingly simple statement, encapsulated his core belief, the notion that governments were not meant to impose conformity but to safeguard the rights and freedoms of the very civilians they governed. It was a belief that set him on a path of quiet rebellion, a journey where he sought not to overthrow the system but to challenge its assumptions and provoke thought in a world that often shunned dissenting voices. As the heretic gazed upon the phrase once more, he knew that the day ahead would be filled with more questions, more exploration, and more intellectual battles against the prevailing currents of his society. His cluttered room, bathed in the gentle morning light, was not just a place of chaos, it was a haven of free thought, a refuge for those who dared to question, and a source of inspiration for the unceasing pursuit of truth. The heretic's journey into the world of dissent began long before he became a whispered name in the city's shadowed corners. He was born into a world where the word conformity carried more weight than individuality, and from his very first moments of consciousness, he was a questioner, a seeker of answers in a society that preferred silence. His earliest memories were etched with the imprint of his insatiable curiosity. Even as a child, he possessed a mind that was unyielding in its pursuit of knowledge and truth. His parents, good-hearted souls who had grown accustomed to the world's conventions, found themselves perpetually bewildered by their precocious offspring. Why do we have rules? The heretic would ask, his wide eyes filled with genuine wonder. What is the purpose of a government? These were questions that most children never even contemplated, let alone articulated with such fervor. But for the heretic, they were not mere whimsical musings, they were the first stirrings of a lifelong quest for understanding. His parents, at first, offered simplified answers, hoping to satisfy his curiosity and guide him towards more conventional pursuits. They explained that rules were necessary for order, and governments existed to maintain that order. To them, these explanations were self-evident truths, accepted without question. But for the heretic, these responses only fueled his desire to delve deeper into the why and how of the world around him. As he grew older, his questions became more sophisticated, and his thirst for knowledge unquenchable. He devoured books on philosophy, history, and political theory, often staying up late into the night with a flickering candle as his only companion. His bedroom, even then, was a haven of inquiry, scattered with texts that ranged from classical philosophers to modern dissenters. The heretic's parents, although initially puzzled by their child's relentless pursuit of intellectual inquiry, soon recognized the unique spark within him. They began to support his quest for knowledge, providing him with the resources he needed to satiate his insatiable curiosity. Encouraged by his family's newfound understanding, 
the heretic continued to ask the questions that others dared not voice. With each passing year, his inquiries became more pointed, more subversive, challenging the very foundations of the society in which he lived. While most children were taught to accept the status quo and conform to the established norms, the heretic remained an unwavering rebel, unafraid to question and eager to explore the depths of his own convictions. The seeds of dissent, sown in the fertile soil of his childhood curiosity, would eventually blossom into a full-fledged rebellion against a world that prized conformity above all else. The heretic's relentless pursuit of truth and his refusal to accept the unquestionable would shape not only his own destiny but also the fate of the city that sought to silence him. As the heretic's formative years unfolded, his insatiable thirst for knowledge and his relentless questioning of the world around him only intensified. He was like a sponge absorbing the wisdom and insights of the great thinkers who had dared to venture beyond the boundaries of conventional wisdom. His world expanded far beyond the confines of his city's well-defined norms, and he delved deep into the realms of philosophy, history, and politics, seeking answers that transcended the surface of society's accepted truths. Books became his constant companions, each volume a gateway to a world of ideas that challenged the status quo. He devoured the works of philosophers, both ancient and contemporary, who had probed the depths of human existence and government's role in shaping it. The pages of these tomes were filled with the musings of visionaries who had envisioned a world where governments were not masters but servants of their people, where individuality and freedom were cherished and where the pursuit of truth was celebrated. Among the many thinkers who left an indelible mark on the heretic's mind were those who had challenged the very foundations of authority. He immersed himself in the writings of Enlightenment philosophers who had argued for the primacy of reason, liberty, and the inherent rights of individuals. Their ideas, once deemed radical, became the foundation upon which the heretic built his own convictions. He marveled at the audacity of revolutionaries who had dared to defy oppressive regimes and had fought for a world where the people held the power to shape their own destinies. The stories of those who had risen against tyranny resonated deeply with him, fueling his growing dissent against the rigid order that dominated his own city. The heretic's library grew over the years its shelves overflowing with volumes that span centuries of human thought. He sought wisdom from across cultures and eras, drawing from the insights of philosophers, scholars, and activists who had challenged the prevailing dogmas of their times. His room, with its cluttered bookshelves and scattered papers, became a sanctuary of intellectual exploration a place where he could engage in a silent dialogue with the great minds of history. As he pored over these texts, he began to formulate his own vision of a society where government was not an oppressive force, but a protector of individual rights and freedoms. The heretic's ideas, nurtured by the profound wisdom he had uncovered in his readings, would soon become the foundation of his quiet rebellion against a world that valued conformity over critical thought. With every page he turned and every idea he embraced, the heretic inched closer to his destiny, a destiny that would see him emerge as a beacon of dissent in a society that sought to suppress all dissenting voices. His intellectual journey was a testament to the enduring power of ideas, and he was determined to share his vision of a more just and enlightened world with those willing to listen, no matter the risks or obstacles that lay ahead. In the midst of his voracious exploration of ideas, there was one particular influence that left an indelible mark on the heretic, a tattered and dog-eared copy of a book authored by a long-forgotten philosopher. This unassuming volume, with its fraying pages and faded cover, held within its bindings a treasure trove of musings on liberty, justice, and the inalienable rights of civilians. The heretic stumbled upon this book in a dusty corner of a second-hand bookstore, 
drawn to it by an almost magnetic pull. As he cracked open its cover and began to read, his world was forever changed. The words within resonated with a fervor that bordered on obsession, igniting a passion within him that he had never before experienced. In those pages, he found a kindred spirit, a philosopher who shared his unwavering conviction that the right to travel was not merely a privilege, but a fundamental human right, one that should never be denied except in the face of concrete and imminent evidence of a threat to safety and welfare. The words flowed like a symphony of dissent, articulating the very ideals that had been taking root in the heretic's own heart. The philosopher's arguments were lucid and compelling, his reasoning unassailable. He painted a vision of a world where governments were bound by a sacred duty to safeguard the inherent rights of their citizens, where the freedom to move about the world was seen as an essential expression of human dignity. The heretic devoured the book, his fingers tracing the passages that spoke to his soul, and his mind absorbing the wisdom like a sponge. As he delved deeper into the book's pages, the heretic began to see the world through a different lens, one that saw governments not as omnipotent overlords, but as institutions entrusted with a solemn responsibility. He was inspired by the notion that dissent against oppressive restrictions on travel and individual liberty was not only justified, but a moral imperative. The philosopher's words fueled the heretic's growing rebellion against the oppressive order of his own city. He carried the book with him wherever he went, its fragile pages a constant source of inspiration and courage. Its margins became filled with his own notes, thoughts, and reflections, as he engaged in a silent dialogue with the long-departed author. The heretic's belief in the sanctity of the right to travel became a cornerstone of his philosophy, a principle that he would champion in the face of a society that sought to restrict the movement of its citizens. With each passing day, his resolve grew stronger, and his determination to challenge the unquestionable norms of his city became unshakable. In the tattered book and the words of the forgotten philosopher, the heretic had found not only a mentor but a kindred spirit who had longed for a world where freedom and justice prevailed. Their shared ideals would serve as the driving force behind his quest for a society that honored the inherent rights of civilians and recognized the true value of individual liberty. As the years flowed by, the heretic's reputation as a vocal critic of government policies continued to flourish. His impassioned speeches, eloquent essays, and thought-provoking writings resonated deeply with those who had long harbored doubts about the established order. He became a beacon of hope for those who questioned the status quo, a guiding light in a world where conformity was enforced with unwavering resolve. His words, delivered with a fervor that matched the intensity of his beliefs, found their way to sympathetic ears in clandestine gatherings and underground publications. People from all walks of life were drawn to his message, captivated by his vision of a society where individual rights were cherished and government power was constrained by the principles of justice and liberty. The heretic's ideas were not revolutionary in the traditional sense, instead, they were a call to return to the fundamental values that had been eroded by years of unyielding conformity. Yet, as the heretic's influence grew, so did the animosity of those in power. The authorities regarded him as a persistent thorn in their side, a voice that needed to be silenced to maintain the fragile equilibrium of their tightly controlled society. They saw him as a disruptor, a force that threatened the foundations of their rule and the order they had established. The heretic's activities did not go unnoticed by those who held sway over the city's institutions. Surveillance became a constant presence in his life, his every move tracked and monitored by shadowy figures lurking in the background. Threats, both subtle and overt, began to surface, as those who wielded power sought to intimidate and discredit him. Despite the growing danger, the heretic refused to be silenced. 
He knew that the cost of surrendering to the oppressive regime was a society devoid of critical thought and individual freedom. His courage in the face of adversity only served to galvanize his followers, inspiring them to stand alongside him in the fight for a world where dissent was not a crime but a cherished right. The heretic's commitment to his principles and his unwavering determination to challenge the status quo made him a symbol of resistance. He became a living embodiment of the idea that one person, armed with nothing but their beliefs and their voice, could stand up to even the most formidable of oppressive forces. His name, once whispered in hushed tones, now echoed through the streets, a rallying cry for those who yearned for a brighter and freer future. As the heretic continued to speak truth to power, the battle between his ideals and the entrenched forces of conformity intensified. The clash between dissent and authority was not just a personal struggle but a defining moment in the city's history, a pivotal point where the very soul of society hung in the balance. And the heretic, with his unyielding spirit and unbreakable resolve, stood at the epicenter of that moment a symbol of hope for all who dared to dream of a world where freedom and justice prevailed. As the heretic stood before the mirror that morning, the reflection staring back at him carried the weight of his convictions and the resolve of a man prepared for the trials and tribulations that lay ahead. He knew that his path would be fraught with challenges, that the road he had chosen was not for the faint of heart. Yet, as he gazed into his own eyes, there was a sense of clarity that filled his being. He was prepared for the skepticism and opposition that would inevitably come his way. The disapproving glances, the whispered accusations, and the threats that would follow him like shadows, all of these were the toll he willingly paid for the privilege of descending in a society that prized conformity above all else. The heretic was not deterred by the prospect of isolation or ridicule, Instead, it fueled his determination to stand firm in the face of adversity. He knew that there would be battles fought not only in the courtroom but also in the court of public opinion. The heretic was acutely aware that his ideas challenged deeply ingrained beliefs and that those who held power would do everything in their power to discredit and silence him. But he had faith in the power of truth and the resilience of the human spirit. He was armed not with weapons, but with the conviction that the right to question and challenge was a fundamental aspect of human nature. For the heretic, the journey was clear, to continue questioning, to keep challenging, and to remind the world that in a society that prized conformity, dissent could be the catalyst for change. He knew that true progress could only be achieved when the voices of dissent were heard when ideas were tested and re-evaluated, and when the status quo was subjected to relentless scrutiny. As he took a deep breath and squared his shoulders, the heretic was filled with a sense of purpose that transcended the personal risks and sacrifices he would inevitably face. He understood that his mission was not just about his own beliefs, but about the collective aspirations of those who longed for a society where individual rights were valued where government served its citizens, and where the pursuit of truth was a cherished endeavor. In the mirror's reflection, the heretic saw not just one man, but a symbol of defiance against the stifling conformity that had held his city in its grip for far too long. He was a beacon of hope for those who dared to dream of a world where dissent was not suppressed but celebrated, where ideas were cherished, and where the relentless pursuit of justice and liberty prevailed. With each step he took that morning, the heretic embarked on a journey that would test the limits of his courage and the depths of his convictions. But he was ready, for he knew that the path of dissent was not a solitary one. It was a path that countless others had trodden before him, and it was a path that would continue to be walked long after he was gone. The heretic's legacy would be measured not in years, but in the indomitable spirit of those who refused to conform, those who dared to question, and those who believed that dissent could be the catalyst for a better world.